Most of the people are worried that you know if the children are not going through a formal school during their earlier years, how will they be able to cope up with their advanced learning after the school years are over? Okay, and many of the parents also have those fears. So I'll share one example. Uh, there is a person by the name of uh, Prasad Khaire. Uh, he was about 17 years old when he came here about uh, three years ago. And uh, I let him just play around in the in the area because we say it is learning by experience, and it is their curiosity, not our curiosity. So I gave him that open space, and he's a very curious kid. So he did a lot of things over here. He built a wooden stool, and he was surprised when I told him that he could build it because in for prior to this, everybody said no, 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 don't do this. You are you are not you don't know enough and all that stuff. Uh, so he was very pleased and then since then through experiential learning and through our discussions he learned a lot uh, there is for advanced learning so he just passed his 12th equivalent over here which is like pre-university in the us and uh, elsewhere in the world uh, he uh, appeared for their open test as well and everything uh, and he passed this uh, very difficult entrance uh, exam which is for the National Institute of Design, NID, which is based in Ahmedabad and the leading design institute in India and probably in the, in the world too, because they get international faculty as well. Uh, he stood 187th rank in India and he got admission there, where in general people try for two to three years to get admission. He got it on his first attempt. And there is a blog that has been written. I will forward that blog to you as well by another person. Uh, where he describes that all his learning came from being here at Sapna Ranch and the freedom that he got to learn. And it made his uh, entry into this uh, tough uh, institute uh, so much easier. He has not finished one year over there. So that is the experience that I would like to share is that when we learn through experience and by doing, we learn uh, in great depth and uh, with great passion and we don't forget it. But today in the current education system, people are learning something that they are not interested in, something that has been jammed down their throat and they forget it as soon as they have finished the exam. The project is called Experience Based Holistic Learning Environment. So learning has to be holistic. It just can't be academics alone. You know, there have to be moral values. There have to be livelihood. You know, how to manage that. There has to be team building and all those things, which the current environment neglects miserably. It fails miserably in this uh, aspect. Uh, so the multiple intelligence. You know, there's not just uh, the IQ. Correct. There is the EQ, emotional quotient. There is the social quotient. There are so many other things that are there, and therefore learning has to be holistic so at Sapna Ranch uh, we do that over here uh, we give the children the freedom to learn what they want to so we say we give them opportunities to explore their curiosity and each child's curiosity is different and we need to create that space which is open enough for every child to explore their curiosity however different it may be uh, so that is one. So here we also do a lot of uh, research, okay? Because I'm a scientist, by I do a lot of research myself. So we have got a geodesic dome, which was actually designed, patented by Buckminster Fuller from California. And we have a hyper, the only bamboo hyper in India, hyperbolic paraboloid. Uh, then we have also built a geothermal. A geothermal is an air conditioner that works on the energy under the ground. Right? Uh, then we have parabolic solar cooker. Uh, we have got a vertical axis wind turbine. Now I'm describing these things, but children have been involved in the design, construction, and operation of this stuff. And when you learn these things by doing these projects, then uh, everything becomes uh, very easy to understand and move forward and solve problems. 
No, it's not just this. In the evening, we have music sessions, we have dance sessions. So it's not all just projects and so on. Uh, we do organic farming, so children get to play with the soil. Uh, I have rescued pets. Right now, I have got five rescued dogs from the street and seven rescued cats. So kids get to play with the animals. Uh, they get to discuss and talk with uh, people from different ages. Uh, at Sapna Ranch, we get international volunteers. I have had 300, over 300 volunteers from 40 countries that have come here, stayed, worked on these projects. And I have also learned from them and they also learned from me and the kids have also learned from them. So it, it, it's a holistic learning environment. So that's why I say it's uh, EBHLE, experience-based holistic learning environment. So in this environment here, we have learners and guides. No students and teachers. We, we don't use that concept. And the guide is also learning from the child uh, as much as the child is learning from the uh, guide. So it's, it's a two-way uh, communication. And we expect guides here to be learning constantly. Learning never stops. Right? It's lifelong learning. Uh, today, unfortunately, if somebody gets a degree like a doctor, the person passes uh, being a doctor and he's a doctor for the rest of the life without having without any need to read anything more or learn anything more and so on. And I think uh, that is going to hurt us. So we need to build a culture where we encourage lifelong learning, we practice it and we promote it. So to give you my background, I was in the US for 20 years and uh, I worked with AT&T Bell Labs, uh, Slumberger Research Center, uh, some of the leading scientists I worked with. Uh, I worked on the world's first internet bank, uh, video on demand, uh, the video conferencing that we are using now, the standards that were built, I worked with the team that, that was working on it. Uh, so I worked on a lot of stuff that was not taught in universities at that time and wouldn't be taught for the next 10 years. Correct. So what I realized at that time is that uh, in the current environment, uh, learning starts with facts, education starts with facts and ends in research. Okay, PhD is the last degree you do. Right? By the time you get to a PhD, you have been narrowed, your mind has been narrowed so much that you're only focusing a few things. You can't see beyond your blinders, right? like a horse. So, uh, and this whole system is like in a horse race. You're in a horse race, uh, unnecessarily. Uh, and nobody is uh, gaining anything from it. So, from my learning, I realized that all my learning has been from research. So, I have come up with a concept here which says, we don't start with facts, we start with research. Okay? And then once we start with research, then let the children end up with the facts that the research uh, alludes to, that it directs to. So, we are completely reversing the learning process, the, the education process. Today, the education process is, is wrong. I would say to the extent it's criminal. We are destroying our children's future. And that is why I'm so passionate about creating this uh, environment where we start with research and end it facts. So a very simple thing I ask people is if you have a solar water heater, this is India, and you can then apply it to America or any other place in the world. In which direction should the solar water heater face? Tell me, Dan. It's a, it's a question for you too. It should face towards the water. No, give me a direction. North, east, west, south. Oh, so the sun sets in the west, rises in the east. So it should face the east. Then you'll get only uh, sun on it for half the day. It should face the east and the west. So there should you be can't. nothing blocking either direction. No, it can only, it doesn't move. The solar water it doesn't move. It's stable. It's stable. static. Should be facing the sun in a place where the sun will reach it. <laughs> Doesn't count. Hey, it's, it's one of the four. <laughs> um, it should be facing north. No, now we are in India. So so this is why so I'll, I'll explain to you. In this, with this question, I'm explaining holistic learning. Huh. Okay. So India is in uh, which hemisphere? India is in the northern hemisphere. Okay. And the sun is hottest at what point? Sun is hottest on the equator. Mm. Correct. That is that is that's why it's the line there. And India is uh, so equator is south of India. Mm. In the northern hemisphere, so equator is to our south. 
so the hottest spot on the planet for us for our india is in the south mm. so the solar water heater should face the south mm. so i was right. way off right now if you're in australia which direction should it face if you're in australia it should face the north it's down yes north. you got it see it's, it's a no brainer but this is how the kids learn now yeah. the kid is taught that you know oh for the solar water heater it has to face in the south irrespective of whether he is in india or not <laughs> this kid goes to australia and they say oh he should face the south because he has not been taught how practically how these things work mm. it's a very simple things now in this question to answer this question mm. you don't not only needed to know physics because solar water is physics you also needed to know geography mm. correct and then how many degrees uh, should that be a tilt so you learn geometry in it mm-hmm. and so on so it, it's it's a full project so we do project based learning which right now i think finland or some countries also doing we started this in 6 years ago mm-hmm. so project based learning is the right way to do that is number one number two we are uh, teaching children to solve problems so it's creative problem solving that is our focus mm-hmm. and the, and the thought is if a child can be good at problem solving that child or that person that individual will never go hungry because if there's enough problem to solve and people are willing to pay to solve problems <laughs> so so that is our focus it is we want our children to grow up to be creative problem solvers mm-hmm. and uh, we want them to solve problems that matter for example climate change okay that's why we do i spoke about solar water heater that's an alternative energy solution correct and it is easier to get solar energy to heat water than to create electricity from solar uh, cells and then use that electricity to heat water mm. because it's a two step process is inefficient and so many other things are there general it is very pleasing to know that there are so many people mm. uh, realizing that the current education system is uh, wrong it is it is depriving our our children of their basic necessities and of and of addressing their curiosity mm-hmm. correct that uh, we have to find alternative ways of meeting their needs of learning mm-hmm. just that whole concept right and that there were so many people is not just one or just me and you or you know a few of us a handful of us this multitude of us mm-hmm.